all of the facts that support the request that we're making, which we believe amounts to death penalty sanctions and the striking of this of uh, judgment debtors original answer and default judgment as to liability. I have a hard enough time. I have a hard enough time giving advice to my own clients versus. Right, right. Fair enough. <laughs> I made everybody chuckle. That's the end of it. I'm done. I'm going back on, I'm okay. going back on mute, Judge. Bye. Negative, negative right. for the weekend. <laughs> okay. I'm assuming he was served with this motion, Mr. Martin. Is that, that is correct? correct, Your Honor. Yes. Okay, uh, Tony, you ready? Yes, Judge. Let's go on the record on cause number DC209893, Moss v. Princip. Council, make your appearances. Bree West uh, on behalf of uh, plaintiffs. I'm sorry. Hurst. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Uh, Michael Hurst here on behalf of non parties, uh, Google and YouTube. Dan White on behalf of the plaintiffs. Let's proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, plaintiffs filed a motion uh, titled Motion to Strike Judgment Debtor's Original Answer and for Default Judgment as to Liability. Um, we, through our motion, obviously presented the court with um, all of the facts that support the request that we're making, which we believe amounts to death penalty sanctions and the striking of this of uh, judgment debtors original answer and default judgment as to liability. We also filed your honor the um, order, which I think summarizes what we put in our motion down to seven points. Uh, that we believe support uh, our request specifically honor and for the record. Um, we'd like to point out that judgment debtor has failed to do the following. Failed to comply with the temporary restraining order that was signed, uh, signed by this court on September 18th, 2020. Failed to comply with the order to turn over that was signed by this court on September 21st, 2020. Failed to comply with the order's compelling post-judgment discovery that was signed by, or uh, that was dated October 9th, 2020, failed to comply with the temporary injunction uh, that was dated for October 15th, 2020, failed to comply with the order compelling the turnover of non-exempt property that was dated November 23rd, 2020, failed to comply with the March 1st, 2020 order from the bench in open court for the judgment debtor to comply with orders to show cause, Your Honor, to personally appear and not be held in contempt of court on March 22nd, and Your Honor, fail to appear in court on March 22nd as ordered by Your Honor. Well, um, let me let me let me just kind of ask a question here. I'm not I'm not opposed to doing this. I'm just trying to think think through this. So, my. You know, my eventual goal in this case, or hope in this case, I shouldn't say goal, hope in this case, is that eventually there'll be a trial between that, that kind of, my hope is that eventually he'll comply with everything and turn over all of the information that he should have turned over a long time ago. But concerning the YouTube channels in particular, there's an argument that Mr. Martin owns them. There's an argument that Mrs. Martin owns them. And there's, you know, that's, that to me is the, kind of the, at least at this point, the main sticking point in the case ultimately. And so if we go to trial on this case, um, then uh, on, on that issue and you have a default judgment as to Mr. Martin, uh, how is that going to, I guess, matter in the eventual trial of this? I mean, it, or, or how do you anticipate that this case is going to end up? Well, quite frankly, Your Honor, um, you know, this is sort of a means to that end, if you will. In other words, yeah. Mr. Martin has failed to comply with any order coming out of this court. And we have, we, what, what our hope is, is that by engaging in in, in what we're doing today will get Mr. Martin's attention enough to be able 
you know, that would cost him to then comply with the things that we need, because we need to be able to get to a final resolution. We agree with you, Your Honor. And I think that um, we're, we're glad that there are uh, some of the other attorneys that are involved because we are moving the ball forward with them. Um, but Mr. Martin is, is not is not complying in any way. And that is that is the main stall in us moving this and resolving this case finally. And so we're hoping that this uh, order that the court will hopefully grant will get us, will get his attention enough that his original answer will be struck, um, that the court will find that he hasn't complied with any of the orders coming out of the court and that will cause him then to respond. And, and if and when he does, then we can move forward to the final resolution of this of, of this matter. But will it, and I get all that, I get, I have no problem with that. I guess my question is, is vis-a-vis -vis Mrs. Martin in the, in the loss and the eventual trial of that dispute, this order really, maybe, maybe this is for another purpose. This order really won't impact that trial because she, it's not going to affect her claim of ownership over those channels, right? Well, I mean, I, you know, her her claims with Mr. Dubose and things like that are, are being, you know, simultaneously litigated, and there's a hearing right. on that at a later time. Um, but at the same time, I, I think it's relevant here that in um, that Mr. Martin has earlier claimed the ownership of these channels, um, and now he's saying that he doesn't state the ownership of these channels, and so by um, by the court taking this action, I think that that would move the ball forward in resolving that issue as well. But it wouldn't it wouldn't preclude Mrs. Martin from making the argument that she owns the channels. Right. I mean, I she certainly can make that argument, Your Honor. I mean, we we obviously disagree. Um, but right, and uh, you know, I'm not going to litigate that here. But there's there's lots of things that don't support that. So, um, but yes, she's obviously entitled to be able to make whatever claim she wants to. And Mr. Hurst. Uh, you know, obviously, you're you're the one who's kind of holding the golden goose right now. Uh, do you? Uh, I don't want there to be any kind of misunderstanding about what is happening here. Uh, you understand that you're to continue to hold the funds or continue. I don't remember if you're holding the funds or putting them in the registry of the court, but you're not to distribute those to the plaintiff until we get a final resolution of this. Does does that make sense? We we do we do understand that, Your Honor, and and I've tried to give as detailed of an explanation as I could upon visiting for the last few weeks with our clients based upon your last hearing. And uh, we sent a letter to you. I don't know if your honors had a chance to review that. We sent a letter. I don't to think you. I've seen it. Okay. We, we sent a detailed letter about exactly what was going on, what we we're doing, all the mechanics behind it, because I wanted to be very transparent about um, what it takes and, and the, and the challenges that we've had, but also that we're, doing our best to comply with your honor's orders. Um, and I think Michael, you um, requested a status hearing that we were hoping to get scheduled today. Is that right? I'd, I'd love to schedule a status hearing, not not for, I mean, not to be set for today, but we can schedule it for- uh, you, you know what day this letter was sent? Cause I, I have not seen the letter, so. Oh, wow. Okay, hold on one sec, your honor, if I can look real quick. Um, Apologize. No, I, I apologize if it didn't get to you. Um, is that 331 maybe or? No, I think it's, we put it on 328. I mean, excuse me, 428, 428. I believe. It was, it was just the other day. Judge. Okay. Um, and Wednesday, I think. Uh, and uh, let me let me share screen so that we can kind of figure out what you're talking about. It's uh, it, was date, it was dated April 27th, Your Honor. Okay. Is that... Is that letter to court regarding motion for reconsideration? Um, you see on the screen what I'm talking right, about. Right. Yeah, I see. I see that. I don't know that uh, it was really a letter regarding the reconsideration, but maybe that's how it got titled somehow in the system. The. Uh, We're not sure if that's it. Uh, it was April 27, so the, the date would correspond with uh, with uh, that being the letter. Notice of filing e serve discovery responses. Is that that's not it, is it? Um, are you able to open those from from your scroll there? Which one do you want me to open? Uh, the four twenty seven one. 
the uh, the one that said reconsideration. I wonder if that's it. Let me see. Yeah, it's for some reason I can't. I don't know why. It happens occasionally. Um, would you mind just emailing the letter to Rhonda and uh, Rhonda? Oh just put on the letter urgent on the, the title urgent, Mr. Hurst. Okay. And Rhonda, go ahead and print that out and put it in my stack. I, I, for some reason, it's not here so that I can see at least. Okay. I'm, I'm emailing it to Beverly to send it to Rhonda immediately. Okay, it'll come from Beverly. Yes. Okay. Okay, and let me make sure we have the correct order you wanted me to sign for today. Oh. And your honor, um, um, the, the last thing that I just wanted to make sure, I, uh, two, two additional things, just if the court can take judicial notice of, of all of the, the pleadings in the court's file that, that support this. I, I, I think you've already done that once, um, but for the record, if the court would be willing to do that. Sure, um, I'll take really judicial good. notice. Thank you, your honor. And then um, in the order, uh, we do request attorney's fees. Um, and I didn't know if the court wanted to hear from me on that. Um, uh, go ahead. There's a reasonable amount uh, of attorney's fees. We're requesting $6,000 in attorney's fees, uh, in, in, um, preparation of, um, this motion and obviously argument today. Um, we did obviously case law research related to that. Um, both Dan wide and myself worked on putting together this motion. Um, and it is approximately... seven substantive pages, including the case law references. Um, uh, and the preparation of the order, as well as oral, uh, just any argument today. Okay. Uh, any objection uh, by Mr. Hurst? No, we don't feel like we have any dog in this fight, Your Honor. Okay. So no objection. Uh, no, no objection, Your Honor. Sorry, I apologize. That's okay. That's from me. Okay. All right. Well, you're on the same side, so I assume you would. Uh, all right. Go ahead. And uh, so I want to make sure that we're looking at the correct order here. Uh, so let me share screen this. Yes. Yeah, so the order would have been filed uh, yesterday towards the end of the day. So that would have been, yes, 429. I Rhonda, so. if you could go ahead and print this order out, it was print, it was uh, from four twenty nine. That's uh, the correct order, Judge, that you're that you were just looking at. And so it's the non signed proposed order judgment on four twenty nine uh, regarding the motion to strike. Rhonda, do you see that on the screen? Okay. All right. And then remind me again, when are we having the ultimate trial on this case, I guess? I believe it's set in October. October, okay. Sounds good. May I, I, may yes. I mention, it's set for October 5th and actually uh, the court, uh, Mr. Capua uh, had forwarded a letter to Mr. Dubose uh, providing notice of the October 5th setting uh, since they got in after the court sent its original. And uh, long story short, I it's set for a non-jury trial, you know, uh, and uh, I don't know if somebody's going to come in and file a demand. We we don't see a need for a jury, you know. Uh, so I, I, I'm wondering about this, and, and, and maybe we could talk about it when Mr. DeBose is here. You know, if this is going to be a non-jury, and, and I think it kind of makes sense it's a non-jury, but, um, you know, we're starting up, as most of you guys know, we're starting up jury trials on a very limited basis in June and July. Right. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, I know Michael's clapping. I, I have to. <laughs> uh, the, uh, you know, in August forward, I'm not sure kind of what we're going to do. If we're, It depends on kind of what the... Uh, how these trials go, if we have any issues with COVID, all that kind of stuff. And so it might make sense when, when we originally sent this to 
do this in October because we really didn't know back then when it was originally set, we didn't know what our trial schedule was going to be. Now we have a somewhat better idea. Anyway, my, my point is to, you might want to talk to Mr. DeBose about moving this trial setting up to, to an earlier date if we're going to do it non-jury. Because once I start doing jury trials on a regular basis, it's going to be hard to reach non-jury cases. So something to talk to Mr. DeBose about. I don't want to do it today, but some, we have a hearing on Monday with him, I think. I believe so. Um, also, Your Honor, since we do have Michael here um, in response to that letter, do, can are we able to get a date for a status conference from the court on that? You don't want to just do it on Monday? Oh, that's fine. I mean, my, I, I didn't know if Michael, if that uh, worked for you. That's fine with us. We, I'm, I'm available to do it on Monday. Is there a concern about not giving notice. enough notice? Um, but, and, and by the way, Rhonda, is, we just sent that email to, uh, to Rhonda. Okay, good, good. I think everybody has, has notice for Monday. Is that right? I think so. It's just the status conference, right? You're not sure. asking me to really. Sure. Yeah, go ahead and uh, Rhonda set a status conference for this case on Monday. And then Mr. Hurst, if you can send an email out to everybody, just letting them know that we're going to have a status conference on Monday. Okay. About, yeah, about this topic. I'm doing this right now. And I want to note for the record that Mr. Moss just joined, joined the, uh, uh, the Zoom. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, anything else, guys? That's it, Your Honor. Have a great weekend. That's All it. right, Thank you, you too. Much. You guys be safe, okay? Thank you. Good seeing everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, it doesn't appear like everyone's here yet for this hearing. Is that, am I right about that? Who do you, who do you believe is missing, Judge? E Eugene DeBose. Oh yeah, I don't see him here. Yeah, I mean, it's, how are you guys today? Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Doing well, Your Honor. Good morning. Good morning, Bree. Good morning, Dan. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Tony. <laughs> um, Good morning, Michael. Do you want me to, or Dan, do you want me to email Gene DeBose or, or Bree, any, either one of y'all? Um, in the it, past, we can email. Pa yeah, I mean, in the past, he's indicated he doesn't represent uh, Brian Martin, only Holly Martin. And so yeah. I don't know what to tell you. I don't want to say you, you, you darned if I do and darned if I don't. Yeah. Right. I, I have a hard enough time. I have a hard enough time giving advice to my own clients versus. Right. Right. Fair enough. <laughs> I made everybody chuckle. That's the end of it. I'm done. I'm going back on. <laughs> I'm okay. going back on mute, Judge. Bye. Negative right. for the weekend. <laughs> Adios, muchachos. Muchachos. <laughs> I'm back on mute. <laughs> All right, I got mute too. Okay, I'm assuming he was served with this motion, Mr. Martin. Is that, that is correct? correct, Your Honor. Yes. Okay, uh, Tony, you ready? Yes, Judge. Let's go on the record on cause number DC209893, Moss v. Princip. Council, make your appearances. Bree West uh, on behalf of uh, plaintiffs. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Uh, Michael Hurst here on behalf of non-parties, uh, Google and YouTube. Dan White on behalf of the plaintiffs. Let's proceed. 